based on an overwhelming amount of anatomical, genetic, and embryological evidence, the diverse organisms alive today seem to be related in a pattern of relationships referred to as a nested hierarchy. Consider for a moment the relationships which exist among all humans alive today. You are related to all living people because there were once ancestral humans from which all humanity descended. Although you are related to all humans, you are related to some more than others. You are most closely related to siblings, a bit less closely related to your first cousins, a bit less related to your second cousins, a bit less related to those of your ethnic group, your race, etc. This type of relationship is a nested hierarchy. Each group can be divided into smaller groups, representing lineages which are more closely related. In the same way, all living organisms seem to be related in a nested hierarchy of relationships. Based only on anatomical, genetic, and embryological evidence, we would conclude that all life shares a common ancestry from a common ancestor. One subgroup of living things form more complex cells and are known as eukaryotes. Some eukaryotes became multicellular and are known as animals. Some animals develop nervous and muscular tissue and are known as metazoan animals. Some metazoans developed a brain and bilateral symmetry and are known as bilateran animals. Some bilaterans developed a body cavity and are known as coelomates. Some coelomates developed a specific pattern of early embryonic development and are known as deuterostomes. Some deuterostomes developed a notochord, a pharynx with slits, homologs of the liver and hypothalamus, and are known as chordates. Some chordates developed a larger brain and are known as craniates. Some craniates developed the beginnings of a backbone and are known as vertebrates. Some vertebrates developed jaws and are known as nathostomes. Some nathostomes developed a specific pattern of bony elements and became the first osteichthyans. Some bony fish develop lungs and specific bones in their fins and are known as sarcopterygians. Some sarcopterygians adapted to life on land develop limbs and are known as tetrapods. Some tetrapods increase their adaptations for land, including the ability to reproduce on land, and are known as amniotes. Some amniotes developed hair and the ability to produce milk for their young and are known as mammals. Some mammals develop live birth and are known as therian mammals. Some therians gave birth to their young in an advanced state and are known as placental mammals. One group of placentals adapted for life in the trees and are known as primates. One group of primates advanced their nervous and muscular systems and are known as anthropoid primates. One group of anthropoids developed color vision and other advances of the nervous system and are known as catarine primates. One group of catarines modified their tail inside their pelvis and became known as apes. One group of apes became larger and are known as the higher apes. Some higher apes diversified in Africa as African apes. One lineage of African apes would lead to chimps and humans. After diverging from the chimp lineage, one group would produce a variety of hominoid species, which would eventually produce a variety of human species, which would eventually produce modern humans, and you.